Hello and welcome back to the channel. I have a very interesting topic that I'm going to be covering today. Um, I feel the need to cover this topic because we are in that time right now to where you have to start counting dollars and cents, okay? Um, I'm going to be talking about how we need to be getting our money out of the bank, or at least most of our money out of the bank, and I'm going to give you some options of what you can do instead, okay? Um, of course, um, you can only hold so much money on hand, right? Uh, you can only hold so much money on hand. So that's a very important thing to understand and to know the rules and the laws concerning or governing um, how money is held. But the bank is not the only safe and secure place to keep your money. And so I'm going to get into some of those reasons right now. I've shared before that um, many, many years ago, um, I used to work for a financial planning firm, and um, I learned a lot while working there. I was very young. I was in my early 20s when I worked there, and at some point, I did want to pursue a career in that. Um, at the time, uh, my boss was offering um, to pay our tuition to learn those you know, very important uh, financial things that you need to learn, but you know, I didn't pursue it for a number of different reasons. Um, I ended up, you know, after I got married, I left the company and everything and uh, kind of got off into my own thing. And many of you know what we did, um, venture off into um, real estate and so many things um, after that. So I'm going to be getting into uh, the banking issue, okay, and why you should get most of your money out of the bank and fast. First of all, um, the economy is very shaky right now. Okay, a lot of things are very uncertain, very unclear, and a lot of people are in a very tight situation. Um, so, you know, even though you might be in a tight situation financially, this is some very good information for you as well, because part of what I'm going to say involves people who may not even have a whole lot of money to begin with, right? But I want to cover the topic of, instead of, you know, the, the topic of having money sitting in the, the bank versus doing other things with that money. A lot of people feel that their money is safe because it is in the bank. And for the most part, I can say that it is somewhat OK, but uh, there are things that are happening and things that happen in the background that you may not uh, see until it's too late uh, that could affect you and your access to your money. OK, and so this is what we're going to be getting into. First of all, banks, uh, they have things that they are already doing with your money. They're investing your money. OK, it doesn't matter whether you approve of what they are in investing it in or not. They don't get your permission. As a matter of fact, when you get that bank account, you are granting them permission to use your money um, however they please. They don't have something that they, they're investing in or a loan that they're writing and contact all of their um, depositors and say, uh, do we have your permission to lend X amount of dollars to this company or do we have your permission to invest in this company? They don't do that, okay? Okay. They don't have to. Your your agreement with them is basically to secure your money and they will hold it and invest it and you get very little from them holding your money. The only thing you're getting is somewhat security. They're securing your money somewhat, but they are profiting off your money. And others are profiting off your money as well because like I said, they write loans on the deposits or against the deposits, right? And your money doesn't go where you want it to go. Sometimes it can be invested in something that you completely disagree with. But I wanna get off into some of the things that you wanna do instead. Of course, I'm not saying take all of your money out of the bank, but I'm saying get most of your money out of the bank and do some other things with your money. Um, we recently met someone who, um, they own a lot of real estate. And now let me tell you what I mean by that. Not just homes, not just houses, right? But they also own land. Uh, they go to auctions. Um, they, go to, they go to estate sales, a number of different things. And they buy these assets. And they literally hold these assets, right? Instead of holding the cash, they are holding the assets, right? Because money can be burned. Money can be stolen, right? But if you own land or if you own um, homes or real estate, 
your money is a lot more secure. And as a matter of fact, your money can increase in value because that land or those homes, that real estate, even if it's not homes, if it's buildings or whatever, can increase in value. Whereas your money in a bank is not going to do much increasing at all. Um, like I said, you get a very minute increase on what you deposit in a bank. But what you have in your property or your real estate, uh, that is going to increase, okay? Most definitely, in some cases, um, it may not. But in most cases, your real estate investment real, will increase. And so we met this guy, and when he showed his portfolio, it was mind-blowing. <laughs> the amount of real estate that is owned, the amount, the amount of land that is owned. And at any moment, he is selling. He's not just keeping this, but he is selling uh, the real estate as well especially what he's getting at auctions or whatever he's able to flip and sell that okay for a profit um, as a matter of fact we were looking at something that he was selling and um, when we offered less than what he was um, actually selling it for um, he had to go back back to the books to make a determination on whether or not he could accept our offer to make sure that he is that he was covering what his initial investment was you see and so people that are in real estate they are very very wise in many cases i'm not going to say wise let me, let, let's say they're very smart um, uh, in regards to how they are doing things okay uh, they do a lot of research we've we've been in real estate before as well and we talked about that how in michigan we owned apartment buildings we owned um, a lot of uh, single-family homes, um, multi-family homes, and that is something that you have to have um, the smarts to do. You have to have the, no the knowledge and the understanding and the patience for, right? But real estate is one of those things that you can have your money in instead of the bank, right? Now, let me tell you what I mean by that, especially if you don't have a whole lot of money. So you may be saying to yourself, How, I can't afford real estate. What is she talking about? I'm going to show you that you can afford real estate and that this is a better investment for you than actually just leaving your money in the bank. Of course, you need a certain amount of money in the bank to cover transactions and cover uh, different things that you need access to. Like you have to keep some liquid money on hand, whether you're keeping it, you know, what you're allowed to keep. Um, at home or what you're allowed to keep in the bank, you have to keep some of your money liquid. You need some liquid assets to be able to access in case you need to buy some things, right? But real estate is different. It's not necessarily a liquid asset that you can just get, um, you can gain or get uh, access to that money right away. You might have to sell it or uh, you might have to uh, borrow against it or something like that. And so here's the deal. <laughs> Here's the deal on real estate. The thing with real estate and those of you who don't think you can afford it, remember I was telling you um, in another video about a young woman in Detroit whose father bought some land for $100 and she started a farm on the land. And the noise you're hearing in the background, it is pouring down outside. It is torrential, <laughs> okay? It is pouring down. Um, our The little lake behind our house, that thing is filled up, y'all. It's filled up. I'm not trying to get off the subject here, but I just wanted you all to be aware of what the noise was. Um, it is torrential rain. I, I'm thankful for the rain because if it was any colder outside, seeing that this is the month of December, that would be a lot of snow. So I'm thankful that it's rain. But um, anyway, back to the subject at hand. When you're investing in real estate, um, you can you can go as low or as high as you want. So if you don't think you can afford to buy real estate or own real estate, think again. Uh, many times there are cities that will sell you a lot uh, for a dollar, some for a hundred dollars, some for five hundred dollars, some for a thousand dollars. You just have to go and find out what they have available, right? And you don't just have to buy within your own city either. You can go to surrounding cities, surrounding communities or surrounding neighborhoods to see if you can buy land. Um, it is actually better for you to buy or hold that real estate than it is to have all of your money just sitting in the bank, especially if you're getting that property at a very, very low price, okay? Um, even in Detroit, there were investors who were buying up when they when they had those homes that they were selling for a dollar or a hundred dollars, they were buying that stuff up like 90 going west. Now, ima imagine if you, um, even if it's a rough neighborhood, 
Imagine if you buy up all of the real estate on one block. And what if you did something phenomenal on that one block that you own, in which uh, some people have done that. Some people have done that. They have turned it into community gardens. They've turned it into all kinds of things. They've improved that infrastructure to where now it is worth a lot more than the few hundred dollars that they paid for it. But either way it goes, that can be a better investment than just let it, letting it sit in the bank. Even if you don't want to invest in the inner city, um, you can also buy an, an acre that may be available or two acres that is available, three, four, five, six, seven acres that you can get for a good price. And years down the line, those few acres that you invested in may be worth a lot more than what you paid for it. So it's essentially an investment, especially if you're not a spending type person, you're not, not a person who's gonna blow through all of your money that's sitting in the bank. If you're not gonna blow through your money and it's just sitting there anyway, and it's been sitting there for years, why not let it sit in a parcel of land that you now own, right? Um, in many cases, if you're buying land in a rural area, they don't even require that you upkeep it meaning you don't have to cut the grass, you don't have to keep it mowed or anything. It can just sit there. If you buy land in a city area, of course, uh, there are more restrictions on that and you will have to keep it mowed and cut down and all of that. So those are some of the things that you want to keep in mind if you're going to go the real estate route. Now, something else um, I think is a good idea for those of you who um, want to do some type of investing you may not have a lot of money. This is gonna be really some gravy information for you. You may not have a lot of money at all, but you wanna do some type of investing and the little bit of money that you do have in the bank is doing nothing for you sitting there. Um, I'm suggesting that you take most of your money out of the bank and do this instead. Um, I've talked extensively about Facebook Marketplace in the past, and so I'm gonna talk about it again. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities on Facebook Marketplace. I see them all the time. Um, I mentioned my brother, he, he's the same, you know, he's, he's a hustler. Um, and so it's just so many different ways where he knows how to take a dollar and turn it and flip it into something else. Right. And so here's what you do. You see an item on Facebook marketplace. Sometimes there are sellers who literally just want to get it out of their hair. Uh, some sellers are giving it, um, things away free. Okay. They will list it as free. There is a free market on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist as well, and other um, publications too. Uh, there are free items that you can possibly improve. You can fix them up, repaint them, refurbish re, um, them, and you now have something that you can sell. But there are also items that, you know, maybe hot items that you can buy in bulk. For instance, one thing that my brother was able to do, one guy was selling a lot of mopeds that... Um, he bought at an auction he was selling he bought them in bulk and he sold them in bulk for just a little bit of profit above and beyond what he sold them for a lot of them needed work on them so my brother he does that kind of work he brought this bulk lot of mopeds he fixed them up okay um, i believe he bought them for 150 each most of them he was able to sell for three four five hundred dollars um, i think some more don't quote me on that but he was able to um, just do a little bit of work to them and make himself a profit off of that little bit of money that he invested in buying a bulk load of mopeds, okay? Um, there are other things that some sellers are getting rid of. One thing that I know for a fact, um, I've noticed because we live on a farm, we have a working farm and when you work on a farm, you have to be able to get from point A to point, a, to point B. Um, ATVs are expensive, and for me, uh, or UTVs, um, should I say, uh, some of these things are very expensive, and you don't necessarily want to invest in something that you're going to be turning the ignition on each and every time you go from point A to point B. We are working constantly, whether we're taking mulch from one place to the other, or dirt, or we're hauling... Uh, sometimes we even haul our animals if we're taking them from one place to another or if one of the animals gets sick and we need to get them off the hill to the nursery or something like that, our bigger livestock, of course. We need modes of transportation to be able to do that, right? Um, we're um, hauling rocks sometimes. And so we use wagons. We use um, our golf carts. We use things that we can, some, some of our lawnmowers where we're able to pull these uh, trailers and things behind us, right? And so 
With the golf carts, we had noticed that even those that were selling really, really cheap, some people put a paint job on them, they changed the, or swapped the seats out, and they put them back on. Even uh, we had talked to one guy who works at a golf cart place and because we were getting one of ours repaired, and he was saying even old um, golf carts that you can get really cheap, that you used to be able to get really cheap, should I say? He said a lot of people are able to sell those for double of what they paid for them because there was a strange hike in even the golf cart market. I remember a golf cart we bought years ago, years ago and for our other farm before we sold it. Um, that golf cart now, we could probably sell it for three times the amount that we paid for it then because back then we got it at such a low price that it's hard to find something that was in such good shape for that price. And so there are many things that you can do other than just letting your money sit and uh, grow uh, dust in the bank. You can invest it in parcels of real estate, um, even cheap parcels for $100, okay? Um, a few thousand dollars. Or you can invest it in things that are resellable, not just golf carts and mopeds and stuff like that. There are other things that some Facebook's um, marketplace sellers are listing old furniture and others are refurbishing that old furniture putting a new paint job on it new hardware and stuff like that and they are selling it for two or three times more than what they paid for it so there are ways to think outside of the box so many other things as well some people make uh, bird houses and sell them some people make dog houses and sell them so instead of letting your money sit in the bank just collecting dust why not put that money to work for you? Even if you have a nonprofit, there are things that nonprofits can do as well. Okay. You don't just have to have a for-profit business, but a nonprofit as well. Things that you can do with your money to um, actually um, uh, fund your nonprofit by other things that you're able to do instead, right? Whether it's products or services that you want to use to help with the operation of your nonprofit. You see, so again, rather than having your money just sitting in the bank, like I said before, collecting dust, why not put that money to use? It's a concept called pay yourself um, first and pay your bills last, right? But I'm not really necessarily talking about this. I'm talking about money that's sitting in the bank. I understand the concept of pay yourself first and pay your bills last. I'm talking about, you know, uh, the rich dad poor dad concept where you're going to grow that money so that you can have not only money to pay your bills but have an increase in your money to able to invest in other things right but I'm also talking about not letting if a person has extra money in the bank not letting it just sit there but putting it to you so that you can grow it okay so that you can do something to improve your situation because in my opinion, the banks are not necessarily all that safe these days anyway because they're investing money in things that you may not be even in agreement with, you see. Um, and they're not always just lending money to you either. So um, those are just a couple of things that you can do, or should I say a few things that you can do instead of having money sitting in the bank, invest in, some, invest in something worthwhile. Um, I'm not trying to give business advice necessarily in this video to, to tell you what you should be um, in case you want to start a business. I'm not necessarily doing that here because um, everyone has a different goal or ambition and you know to just try to include it in this video to say start a business. You have to say well then the person will ask well what do I start a business on right? What do I do? What kind of business can I start? That's a whole other conversation. What I'm telling you to do right now is not necessarily a business, but it's something extra that you can do with your money instead of letting it sit in the bank. So anyway, I hope that you're able to glean some information from this video. I hope that you're able to get something that you can use uh, to give you some thoughts and ideas on you know doing something better and different with your money uh, because again banks are just you know though they're there they're there for the the reason that they're there for but you can invest your money too just like they're doing okay they're investing your money and so you can do the same thing and that is what i am encouraging you to do today i'm done with this video remember in the comment section to leave your comments and even some questions i might get around to um, peeking at some of your questions if time permits. But um, I'm done with this video. Until next time.
We hope you liked today's topic. Please leave your comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share it like this video, and with that, we're out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel, and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.